I mean, the thing is, we do start with some dates. The first step that I always like to say is, okay, when is this going to happen? You, you do have to map out, you take out your calendar and say, okay, I want to open on this day. I want to close on this day. And maybe you map out any other live or scheduled events like a webinar, like free calls, like Facebook lives, whatever it is that you might know, like the known information. Um, I do think that that's a, a really great first step. So we start there. All right, great. So uh, in terms of like figuring out those dates, what do we need to think about when it comes to those dates in terms of like length of time? Are we putting down the exact time of close? How detailed are we getting? Well, I mean, I, I don't think you need to get crazy detailed, but I do think you need to decide, okay, um, what date am I going to open? I generally like to open on some sort of day in the middle of the week, or I have seen a few launches that open on Monday, they close on Friday, and those are great too if that's your choice. Um, but length of time open, a couple of weeks, maybe two, maybe three weeks. It, that, that actually is stuff that we kind of have to figure out by looking at your audience and how they generally make decisions and maybe um, other buying decisions similar to what they're looking at for you, like if, if you're someone who sells, let's say a planner or a product or something, you might want to look at other product products similar to that to see how long their promotions run. And because it's not like you're copying or you're trying to like, trying to look at what they're doing as the be all end all. You're looking at it like, no, the customer is used to that time frame. So just like when I said two weeks, when you look at online courses, for instance, like uh, right now I'm seeing anywhere between two and three weeks of open cart. Some people do or are really, you know, really aggressive, like to send an email every single day and do it Monday through Friday. Most people don't dare to get that direct with their audiences or don't really feel comfortable doing it that way. I think that that's a personal choice, but between two and three weeks open and then I always like to suggest that if you're going to have a live event of any kind, like a webinar or a Facebook live, try to do that big, try to do at least one of those on the day that you open. So, All right. so that's it. I mean, the time, the timeline bit is a little bit, you kind of have to play around with that yourself, but two to three weeks for open, open with a live event. All right. Very cool. So, so once you get that stuff out, and I hope you hope you don't mind, I'm jumping right into like what yeah, the yeah, next. Go for it. Uh, people are interested in getting into the, the tips. So uh, yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, I mean the dates, that stuff you can kind of like futz around with a little bit. That's just to give you some context of, okay, this is when I'm going to let people know we're open and this is when we're closing. <laughs> but that's a whole other discussion. So once you have that done, what I like to do then is step back from the schedule and really think through your launch from the first moment that you decide you're going to tell people about it. So list out every single mention or piece of communication, whether it's an image, whether it's a PS in your email, whether it's a video, like a bumper at the bottom of your videos, or maybe you mention it on your podcast. So don't worry so much about the format at first. Just say, okay, we're going to start small. We're going to list things starting with that PS all the way to the open cart. Um, now, the list, might you might not know what to put on the list. And here's my advice for that. You start with like the little tiny mention. That's why I said PS. And then you kind of slowly ramp it up like you do a piece of music. So look at, look at it kind of like you're turning up the music as you're getting closer to that open cart date. 